What is something you thought would never catch on, but it became huge? Google as a search engine. We already have Yahoo. It'll never be bigger than Yahoo. Me. 2001. Frick Yahoo. Alta Vista was the crap. Minecraft. I thought it would maybe appeal to a couple hundred thousand people max but nope. Over 100 million registered users. I remember when it started. So much has changed I don't know how to play anymore it's so complicated now. Two things. One. Madonna. I saw her rolling around the stage singing like a virgin at the first annual MTV Music Video Awards in 1984, and thought there's a flash in the pan if I ever saw one. 2. I was invited as a test audience to see 3 new TV shows they were shopping, in a room with 100 other people. I watched and reviewed them all, and one I truly disliked. I didn't think it was funny, and didn't think the characters were likable. Gave it my lowest rating. It was Frasier, came to network TV the following fall and ran for 11 years. TL. DR. Don't trust my opinion on pop culture. Facebook. Why would anyone bother when we have MySpace? Same here. Most of my friends were on MySpace since you needed a college email address for Facebook. I also loved how you could customize your page. Ah. Good times. Cameras and cell phones. The resolution was crap compared to proper cameras. Who would need this except spies? I should have said. Who would need this except spies? I used to wonder. I use mine all the time now. The best camera in the world is the one you have on you. If I needed to take a picture, I'd sure as heck settle for a .3 MP camera. Thank god cell phone camera tech evolved. Steam. When it first came out everyone went nuts. We have to log in to this shithole to play 1.6. PFFT. When 1.6 dies Steam will die with it. It's 2014 now and Steam is the biggest gaming platform for the out there. Not only that but 1.6 is still alive. Twitter for me. Limited to 140 characters? Ha. Huh. This will never work. Snapchat for me. The first time I experienced it, someone got one, laughed at it, and when I asked to see the picture they said it was gone. They then explained to me the marvels of Snapchat, to which my response was, why not just take a normal picture? That way you can keep it and continue to laugh at it and show it to other people? I get that the point of it sometimes is pictures you don't want to have kept around, but most of the time it is just silly or normal pictures that would have every reason to be kept. I remember reading about pocket monsters in Nintendo Power and lamenting that this awesome seeming game would never come to America. Boy, was I wrong. I see you took to it quite well. iPads. So it's a giant phone you can't use to call or text with? What's the point? Get a laptop if you want to browse the internet from anywhere. Also the iPad mini. Bigger than your smartphone, but smaller than your iPad. Too big for your pocket, with a tiny screen to look at. Touchscreen. Keyboardless smartphones. I mean who would want to type on anything that is so small and has no keyboard? Boy I was wrong. If I could get a bulky iPhone with a slide out keyboard, I would in a heartbeat. Girls wearing spandex as pants in public. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I just can't believe it's happening. We live in marvelous times. Dancing with the stars. Nobody is going to watch B-list celebrities dance. B-list. If only they were that famous. A TV show with dragons, magic, and wharfs. Game of Thrones is everything that got me made fun of in high school and now everyone freaking loves it. Because it has tea and blood in it. That's why. Bottled water. Seriously. I remember comedians cracking jokes about it. There will be aisles of water at the grocery store. Crowd goes ha 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 ha. I only buy bottled water for the bottles. Vine. Didn't think that 6 seconds would really do anything. Turns out people are pretty creative. The only one that truly made me crack up was one they showed on Tosh. Zero. It was a couple guys wondering if staples really sold staples. Then when they found out they did, they said you know what this means. The next shot was them running into dongs while screaming. Had a friend who showed me Gangnam Style about a month before it blew up. I said heck no, it's too weird. It will be a small novelty at best. Later he sent me a link to the what does the fox say video. Again way before it got big. Again I said no. Too annoying. 
Next time I'm gonna freaking listen. I was the same way with Got Eyes song somebody that I used to know. I think I saw it through our list to this post when it only had a few thousand hits and didn't really think much of it. A few months later the radio was playing it to death. <laughs> texting. First off, I'm relatively old. I remember when texting first came out and I thought that's the single stupidest thing I've ever heard of. If you need to say something quickly it would take less time to just call the person this was way back when in the long long ago before T9 and swipe and all that fancy jazz. So typing a text was relatively tedious. The days before the full keyboard I hated texting. So tedious. I remember my first text was M. From my personal experience, living in a suburb but being country by wearing Carhartt and getting a lift kit on your truck. This happened in high school for me. Graduated in 08. I remember one or two kids started dressing that way and chewing tobacco and whatnot around freshman year in high school. I thought it was kind of goofy because we live in a pleasant suburb and only one or two kids actually grew up on a farm or on a lot of land. Next thing I know by senior year all the cool kids were countryed out. Trucks were the cool car. Chewing tobacco was all over the place. People put away their polo shirts for camo shirts and orange beanies, etc. Rihanna. Back when Panda Replay was her big hit and she had that long golden weave. I just didn't find her that interesting or different from anything else out there. Panda Replay is still her best song. Call Me Maybe. Seriously thought the song was a joke. Turned out to be a joke that everyone got stuck in their head and sang. Constantly. This is a really good pop song. Pretty much every person that heard it ever had it pegged as an absolute smash hit. Being a nerd. I remember being told as a kid that the nerds will eventually take over the world but I figured that was just stuff adults said to make us feel better. <laughs> Reality TV. Seriously, I thought it would be a short lived fad. It is just so dirt cheap to produce relative to other types of shows that I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon, as sad as that is. <laughs> I was offered an insider's price on Under Armour stock when it went public. I thought, ENH. The market is saturated with athletic apparel. Didn't buy it. Would have made a mint. Here is an important thing to remember. You can break into a saturated market either with quality or advertising. If you can do both well, you are golden. Single speed fixie bikes. Living an area with a lot of hills. I was surprised to see them everywhere. This ain't no velodrome. MC hammer pants and overalls. Which are unfortunately making their way back. Beanie Babies. Their marketing director must be a genius. Bitcoin. Seriously, I thought it was a passing fad. Same, but I still mind them from about 2010 because I thought it was kind of cool. Then I sold them late 2012 when I realized it was freaking stupid. Then came the bubble. To this day, no matter how many pillows you put on my bed, test stains still appear. The movie Frozen. When I first saw the trailer I thought it was going to be some dumb kid movie that was pushed out to make money during the holiday season. That's pretty much what everyone thought. It was poorly advertised with what I called snowman spam. Eventually it got around to actually being really good through word of mouth. And as a result they made huge money off the thing for months. Bitcoin. I mined for months, accruing a hefty sum. I sold a decent chunk off for $30 when they peaked, and more at $13, and even more at $3.14 when I thought it was dying. Let's just say I would never have to work again had I kept my original amount of coins. It did give me a couple of years to tool around without worry, though. Snuggies. Furbies. What the frick. People. Don't feed them after midnight. Gangnam Style. I'm from Korea, so I appreciated the mocking of the affluent Gangnam District people, and I thought the song was catchy and the dance was funny, but I never thought for a moment that it'd catch on worldwide. I thought it'd be another popular Korean thing that remained only in Korea. Blu-rays. I thought, we just converted to DVDs, picture and audio can't get much better than that, but nobody will ever convert. Boy was I wrong. I just hope we can all collectively ignore whatever comes next. I really don't want to replace my collection again. The Prius. 
The first time I saw one I thought to myself my god that's the worst looking car I've ever seen. I think you forgot about the Pontiac Aztec. Email. My brother was a scientist at the time. I remember him showing me around their research facilities and bragging that they could send messages to American scientists and get a reply the same day. And I remember thinking, typical scientist gadget. What use is that, really? Flappy Bird. I saw it and thought it was this dumb little game that was the same as every other one. Yet a week later every human on the planet as even a few dogs were playing it. I wonder how much money he made from all the ads. Google Plus. Oh wait. Internet. Seriously. I remember when TV commercials started adding CS at abc.com for more info. I remember thinking WTF does that mean? Why would anyone bother doing that? Well I'll say it. Hipsters. How the heck can a culture about counterculture become mainstream and remain counterculture? The logic hurts. But they knew that before I did. There seems to be a misconception here that I dislike the hipster movement. And I'm being accused of confusing hipsters and posers and collectively applying labels to both. I wasn't specific enough. Let me re explain. I can't believe that what was a largely faceless non collective, just a continental quantity of same thinkers, who stood against popular culture, refusing to follow social norms just because they were told to, and instead seek against that current what best expresses their own individuality, could possibly become a stereotyped, marketed, cookie cutter fad. I didn't think it was possible for something like that to catch on, due to the disillusionment required to believe that one represents a movement while at the same time completely betraying it. I was wrong. Apparently people as a collective really can be that stupid. Make more sense? What I hate is the ignorant hypocrisy of the posers, not the intrepid seeking of individuality. How the heck can a culture about counterculture become mainstream? A good deal popular culture follows this path. Being against popular culture is cool. Industries know that and try to keep one step ahead of the curve. There's a really good documentary about exactly this but I forget what it's called. Fanny packs and crocs. I get it people. You like your handy dandy fanny packs and drop dead gorgeous crocs. I don't give two shoots. Just like you don't if you wear them. Now leave me be. Do what you want to people. Go and work that helpful fanny pack and strut around in those crocs like you are a dang runway model if that's what makes you happy. If you like them well more power to you. But I don't need a hundred dang messages about how wonderful fanny packs and crocs are. Going to the store to get fanny packs and crocs. Be back later. Twilight read it in 2005, thought it was a half decent teenage romance. I quickly moved to better fiction. I did not even think there would be a sequel. Text messaging. I remember saying, why would you text when you can just call somebody? I can tell you why. Calling requires both people being available. Texting allows for storage and time corrections. This is why I knew texting would be bigger than calling. Windows Explorer. I thought it would flop, because it looks and works nothing like Program Manager did. Oh man. Program Manager. Nostalgia. MySpace. I didn't actually use it, but I thought that people would see it was useless because you could already talk to your friends on MSN Messenger. Guess not. I'm going to date myself here, but DVDs. I worked in a video store when they came out, and we all scoffed. Who cares about bonus features? People just want the movie the picture can't be that much better nobody's going to want to buy a whole new system. Whoa, we were so wrong. To be fair, I never thought Blu-ray would catch on either. Also iPhones. I couldn't figure out why anyone would want a phone, MP3 player and camera all in one. Now I can barely live without mine. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.